So, the final episode of Prehistoric Planet. What an episode. <laughs> Two, yes. Um, what an episode this was. We begin the episode with North America's largest land animal at the time, which of course is the Alamosaurus. Um, and it was great to see this animal reconstructed. It looked absolutely fantastic. Very uh, thick and chunky. Lots of meat on them. Not that, you know they weren't shrink wrapped at all. They didn't have long spindly necks. Very uh, meaty. Lots of hide. They actually looked like real animals. You know when you see a skeleton of one of these animals, it's it's you think wow it's big. But then when you actually put the meat and the muscle and all the hide and the thick skin. You think, wow, what an absolute beast. Um, and there was one uh, individual which was a male, and they said that the, you know he reached a great age. I think he said 70 years of age he was. Mm. And they said he was probably the father of many of these individuals in this herd. So he's passed down his genes, but he's come to the end of his life, very sadly. Um, but yeah. he's obviously overnight he passes away, but his body isn't... Um, mm. you know, put to waste, it's a circle of life, as they say, and then these little raptors come in to try and uh, start eating away, but unfortunately for them, they can't get through his thick hide. Yes, now you see this in Africa with with uh, some carcasses like hippos and uh, rhinos or elephants, if they've died, their, their hide is so thick that many predators are, are waiting for something with a enough power from their jaws to actually tear the hide open. And I think it's only... Um, hyenas and lions maybe leopards I think that actually have the power to rip open the carcass uh, and of course we all know one animal uh, on the land had the largest um, bite force bite for the most powerful bite force should we say um, and that of course goes to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Tyrannosaur actually... has smelt out the carcass from many miles away and come to investigate on the uh, Alamosaurus, the dead Alamosaurus carcass. And he actually chases off the raptors as well. He, he, he does. Comes in, in fact, he goes go, for one. Yeah. <laughs> He's, He's probably thinking, one. I'd rather have some fresh meat rather than this uh, this dead meat here. I'd rather have something that's alive. Uh, but they're too fast for him, uh, yeah. so they run off. And the T-Rex tucks in to the, the carcass. He does, and there's a little bit that does go to the raptor. There's a little bit of scraps that he does manage to get. Yes. Um, but sooner or later, we have from the skies, quite a quite less arrive. Well, it was only a matter of time before another predator uh, turned up. When you've got something that big, the smell, and also quite a quite less there in the air, they'll be looking down. You know, they, they'll have a bird's eye view of the landscape, and they've obviously seen this huge titanosaur dead on the beach, and thought. I'll try my luck with this. Exactly, um, and he said it said that it's one of the few predators that predators that actually, you know, go against T Rex. Mm -hmm. um, it shows the confidence that it has to even just go up yeah. to it and try and challenge it. And at first, T Rex doesn't really take it seriously, but then the odds change when a second one arrives. Yeah, I think the first one was just trying its luck. He thought, I'm just going to sit here and just see if you know, see what the T Rex will do. And the T Rex just goes, Oh, you know. It's only one. I'm not bothered. I'm not even going to, be, going to give you the time of day. But then, obviously, as you said, the second one turns up. Now the odds have changed. And at first, I was a little bit thinking, really, could could this animal really take on a T-Rex? But then you see as the T-Rex actually goes forward, one of them looks really nervous. You can see him like jumping back into his like, oh, you know, definitely scared. They don't want to get bit by this creature. But when they take to the air, the odds change. Um, now think about it you know a t-rex you might think surely not a t-rex would beat these animals in a fight but there's two of them and that bill that beak is how long was it i'm sure it was two meters or something like that something this like huge that. javelin long. you've got to think as a t-rex in that position is it really worth the risk of getting injured if one wrong swipe, like it said, it could cost it an eye, you know, if it pokes it in the wrong place. But also even just a, a poke in the back, which it actually does, it poke prods the Tyrannosaur in the back, that could get infected or something like that. So you think, is it worth standing here and just, you know, the T-Rex doesn't have an, an ego like it does in Jurassic Park, thinking, I must fight to the death. It's thinking, no, I'll leave this, That's I'll come it. back it later. It cuts its losses, doesn't it, and think, you know what, 
I'll let you have your fill and I'll just come back later because them yeah. two Quetzalcoatlus aren't going to eat all of that sauropod. They're going to eat not. as much as they can and then they'll fly away and the T-Rex can come back, eat the food that he needs mm -hmm. and he's not wrist injury, he's not been injured, he's not died. Yes. I think it was good this though because it's showing realism of what would really happen in the natural world. And I know a lot of people might be upset about this thinking, well, what? the T-Rex would win in a fight. But... I mean, if you look at uh, Monday animals today, you'll see that um, I've seen footage of polar bears uh, going on tops of cliffs trying to eat uh, birds' eggs. And the birds are flying down, pecking at the birds, you know, stabbing them with their beaks. And the, the, the bear gets so fed up with being pecked, he just thinks, oh, you know, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. You know, I'm not dealing with the hassle. And I think it's happened with grizzly bears as well, I'm sure birds have just been flying down just pecking predators that are so much bigger than them but they've obviously got that advantage of the flight you know they, they if, if t-rex tries to lunge for them you know it, it's very hard to maneuver and take on a on a yeah, predator yeah. that's in the sky you know they can come to the ground and meet the t-rex on the ground but the t-rex can't take to the skies and meet them in the skies yes. So um, I thought it was a very interesting scene. I thought one yeah. we were all looking forward to, and I think uh, it didn't disappoint. No, I mean, I remember seeing that in the trailer, and I thought, surely not. I quite, it's quite a quite on a T-Rex. But now that I've watched the scene and I've seen the clip, it does make complete sense. It, you know, why risk injury? Why risk losing an eye over this meal? You know, you may as well just uh, back down and come back later. And it shows the intelligence of the T-Rex kind of as well. It made a yeah, logical yeah. choice and um, he's lived to fight another day. Exactly, yes. It's survival of the wisest as well, you know, not just the fittest. fighting. You know, he could have he could have carried on fighting there. Imagine if he'd lost an eye. He wouldn't have been able to hunt as well in the future. You know, imagine if he got an infection or something like that. It's just not worth the risk for the Tyrannosaur. Well, there we have it. That's, that's the first opening scene. Yeah, a brilliant way to open up the, the last uh, episode. Fantastic uh, start, wasn't it? It certainly was. And the second scene is another Mosasaurus. Yes. And this is back in the sea, and um, it's hunting the Ammonites again, mm -hmm. um, which was really interesting to see because it was hunting them, but it wasn't just eating them straight away. It was no. grabbing hold of them. And it was cracking the shells to basically deflate them because it released the oxygen yeah. out of the shells, which keep the ammonites, you know, floating, able to move. Keeps them the buoyant, water. doesn't it? So it, it, they sink down to the bottom when it bites one of them. That's yeah. it. And it, it wouldn't stop and eat the one that it caught. It would just keep going around and bite as many as it could mm -hmm. to disable as many. And then later, it would then come back and all the go to the ocean floor. And then start eating all the ones very, that are disabled. Very clever, I must say. This this reminds me very much of a fox. If a fox breaks into a, a hen house, it will kill all the chickens. Mm. And it will grab as many as it can in its mouth and then run off with them. And you see this as well uh, with um, Arctic foxes. Um, if you've ever seen birds that nest on the cliffs as the baby birds are flying out for their first ever test flight to the ocean, some obviously don't make it they land on the on the um, on the land instead of in the ocean and the fox will come over and it will just grab as many as it can in its bill it won't just be happy with one it thinks I'll grab as many as I can run off back to the babies and it runs back again and it's collecting them because it, it makes sense rather than just have one and then you took into the snack and all your prey is then left you might as well kill as many as you can and then you can just gorge on them mm -hmm. later on. Yeah, again, again showing the intelligence of these dinosaurs, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, so I thought well, that good. was um, very good. I must say, I really enjoyed, it's only a small shot, but the shot where the Mosasaur sticks its tongue out. <laughs> I thought this was really good because yeah. it reminds us that they're related to the lizards yes. because we see that it's a, a forked tongue. And what's interesting about this as well is that um, snakes do this today and lizards. Uh, they taste with their tongue, they taste the air, and you, almost like a smell as well. Um, and what this is, is the, the reason it's a forked tongue is because whichever one has picks up the strongest scent can lead them in a, that direction. So if they're getting more of a taste on this side, on the left, mm -hmm. 
their prey is more likely to be on that side so it leads them in that in that direction and obviously in water it's going to be able to taste you know it's prey a little bit uh, better in the water through the liquid yeah. um so yeah i thought that was a really nice touch that having a you know <laughs> seeing him stick his tongue out that's it i like it yeah it was very good and next we're on to the um the raptors um, the little, um, the white fluffy baby ones with the father uh, yes. who are at a little, um, like a lake and there are tons, thousands, millions of flies yes. that have um, hatched <laughs> uh, from the lake. I think all the, um, the larvae had, um, you know, hatched and they were there and they were there for the, um, there was stuff in the water as well, wasn't there, that they were feeding on. Uh, if I remember rightly, I think there was toxins or something in the water. That there's too much salt or something like that, and the flies could um, basically get rid of this. They had a better way of getting rid of the toxins in the water, mm -hmm. um, and then the babies were feeding off the flies. Again, this is really good. It's it's realistic rather than showing dinosaurs just you know hunting big prey and stuff like that. It's showing you know some would have just eaten things like insects and yeah. things like that, especially babies. You know, they're down at the bottom of the pecking order. They've got to work their way up to, to bigger prey. And they talk about how these raptors are quite an intelligent um, species. And the, you see the babies, some are just like napping away in the air, and then some figure out that actually it's more intelligent to just run with, with your, your mouth, mouth open, open. <laughs> yeah. and gather as many flies as yeah, possible. Just like a swallow, swallows do that. They just fly with the mouth open and mm. just fly into a swarm of flies uh, to, to grab as many that land in their mouth. Exactly. Yeah. But then we do have the, the father who's got his eyes on bigger prey, yes. uh, which are these um, these birds. They remind me of flamingos um, I thought that, in the yeah. middle of the lake. Yeah. And um, he's creeping up well, on them. They, they were um, very early forms of ducks, weren't they? I think they were that, like very early forms. That would make sense. They did look like a goose, I thought. They, looked they had like, like a duck bill. It was like a half a duck, half a flamingo. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. And um, he manages to grab one of these. He runs up yeah. and grabs one. Um, and he brings that back to the, to the babies yeah. to give them more more substantial meal. I like that as well. It was very um, good, the shot, how they got that hunt scene in, how he was stalking it for quite a while. Mm. And then as he jumped, went to grab it, they flew off and he jumps up and grabs it. Yes, grabs brings it leg. down. Really good shot. Yeah, really, really good. It was good. I enjoyed that as well. Uh, but the next scene is uh, one that was seen in the trailer and I was looking forward to as well, um, which is the classic Triceratops. Oh, yes. The Triceratops <laughs> um, are in the forest yes. and um, they're all together for the, um, well, it's basically the um, the breeding season, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And they're competing for mates. The females are here to, to pick a male and the males are here to, to show off and fight off all the rivals mm -hmm. to compete for a female. Uh, and here, this is where we meet a, a young male. Um, his horns are nice and fancy. They're um, they're big. The you know, but they're untouched. That uh, David tells us, and he basically um, he's not got much experience in fighting. Um, however, the next Triceratops that turns up, he does. Yes, we see this huge bull Triceratops. I think he said he weighs 10 tons and he's absolutely enormous. He was and 30 years old as well. Yes, 30 years old and he had these enormous horns, absolutely huge. And when, when he first walked big. out, I was like, I didn't know they grew that big. But when you think about it, you know, the fossils that we found of um, Triceratops, there w would obviously be freaks of nature. You know, where you look, look at it with elephants today, you see some elephants you look at them on average, they've got a few big tusks, and then you always find that massive bull that's just got these enormous tusks. And with him being 30 years of age as well, you think at the time these horns have had to grow, because what you have is you have the bone, and then over the top of the bone you have keratin. So this keratin has just been growing and growing and growing and growing. All, every year it's been growing a bit more, and now he has these enormous horns. And uh, he mentions... David, that you know, these have got a bit of wear and tear on them, um, which the female finds uh, impressive. It shows it sh experience, it shows his experience, and he's you know he's been around the block a bit. Whereas this young male, his lovely, nice horns look very beautiful, but it doesn't look like he's got much experience. But still, the younger male does take on 
this. Well, that's this, it. He gets this some experience uh, in this fight, doesn't he? Because yes. they have a standoff and they, they have that run up where they run up and you hear the clatter and it just thuds and you hear that, you know, the noise is incredible. And then they're locked horns and they're pushing and shoving um, and there's a shot and like an aerial shot from above and you can see the, the size comparison really from yeah. inside and the, the old male is just you can see he's like hind legs and his his back is just built like <laughs> like a brick wall like a tank <laughs> that's it and um, he does get the better of the um, of the younger male and he and he throws him to the ground and in the process he also snaps some of yeah, the younger male's horn off. horn off doesn't he yes um, and you can see the the blood. You know, it's quite um, the blood coming out of it, and the, a bit of a, yeah. like the the injury. Um, but as it was said in the um, the episode, this is now next time round when he comes to breed, he's got some wear and tear, and you know females will then look at him and say, "Oh, and actually, a bit more experience as well." You've you yeah. fought, so next time you might come round and actually beat you know the rival um, yeah. and be success, successful in the breeding. I mean, imagine witnessing this. I mean, if you watch stag today or moose, you know, fighting with their antlers, and then you think, just scale that up to this. I mean, you could it's it's when they were digging their, their feet into the ground, and you could see the dust kicking up and mm. the power there. Imagine the power. It's, oh, it's just incredible. It's immense. It's, it's mad. <laughs> it's nature just on, on steroids, isn't yeah. it? You know, when you think of animals today, you know, scaling up to that, oh, it would have been uh, quite something to witness in real life. It would be amazing. It certainly would. Well, we're on the, to the final scene. Oh, my goodness. The final really? scene of the um, wow. the last episode and the season. So this is um, the Nanukasaurus. Yes. Um, and it's watching um, these... Um, I think oh, I'm not sure the the dinosaurs. Like Ornithomimus, I think. Ornithomimus, is it? Yes, yes. And the, another, they're yeah. like feathered, and then they're like a snowy environment. Mm -hmm. And um, it says this Nanukasaurus is very hungry. Um, now these are very fast dinosaurs, um, but the herbivores yeah, they're like ostriches, aren't they? They can just leg it. That's it, yeah. Um, so basically, because they're faster than the Nanukasaurus, it basically says. His aim is to cause panic, and he yeah. runs in and just causes absolute chaos. And hopefully, one will get split off or something. Yeah, that's it. And um, with the first attempt, he doesn't get near one, um, yeah. and they escape. Um, but then he comes at another angle, I think, doesn't he? Or he comes from a bit more. I think he he, he runs at them again. I think it's just it's just a case of just keep trying until you succeed. That's it. And uh, one one gets split up from the group because I think. He was close to grabbing one, and he actually goes to bite, and you see him just miss, and that one then turns around, doesn't it, and yes, runs away yeah. in the other direction, and the rest of the group run off the other way. Now, being on your own, now you're vulnerable. Where are you going to run, you know? Yeah. And uh, then she and slips, doesn't she, on the ice? She does, yeah, she slips, and that just gives the Nanukasaurus uh, uh, the edge, essentially, yeah. uh, to get in it, and then the, she does grab hold and kill Killer, unfortunately, yes. but um, I, I did love this scene though. It reminded me very, very much that these these shots because we see these animals in the in the um, in the first season of um, yes. prehistoric planet, um, and they do remind me of wolves. I think that's where they've got their inspiration here because we see the first one where they're where they're hunting. Um, they're all teaming up together to hunt a pachyrhinosaur. Yes, that reminds me of wolves hunting bison. Now this reminded me of wolves hunting something like a hare. Um, I remember watching a pack of wolves on, on, I think it was on Planet Earth or one one of those mm. that David is uh, narrating, and yes, you see the wolf yeah. going after this hare, and the hare is running all over the place. They actually nearly grab it. You see the the fluff in the mouth. It actually rips off a chunk of hair, and you think the hair's going to get away, and eventually they do get it. But this reminds me. It's just the aerial shots as well that do it for me. You know, you're looking up from above as if you're in like a drone or a helicopter. And it, it's that shot that makes it just give it that realism, you know. You, it, was a, it was a beautiful scene to watch, a really good hunt. Um, and that's what I think we all really wanted from the first um, episode. We didn't get to see too many hunts, you know. But in this one, I think they really did make up for it. We got plenty of hunts. And yeah. this one, I have to say, it's up there with one of the best hunts that I've seen. Really, really good. I agree. And it's interesting to see them hunting alone uh, rather than in season one they yes. were a big pack but I think 
the return the anthemimus to uh, babies and they start eating that and it just mentioned that once they've grown up they'll start they will start helping the mother with the hunts so ah oh, did is that what they said I can't yeah yeah so they'll oh, right. when they get old enough they'll start coordinating the hunts maybe more That's interesting, uh, like we saw yeah. in uh, season 1 um, when and then they'll be able to tackle bigger prey, such as Pachyrhinosaur. That's it, yeah. Yes, that's, that makes uh, a lot of sense. I think, that, I think it's really good, though. It's shown a variety as well, because some dinosaurs, we don't know if they did hunt in packs uh, or whether they hunted alone. So it's showing, you know, maybe sometimes they would group into gangs. I don't know if they would have actually been in a social group. Maybe they would have been. But uh, if you look at Komodo dragons, you know, they hunt together sometimes. They'll all gang up and, and hunt something mm -hmm. and they're not actually in a pack you know they just kind of all go oh right come on then we're going to hunt let's let's just do it you know and they all just decide to start yeah. hunting together so it's they've all got the same goal so the yeah kind of yeah gang together so at the time, it, it could be something like that or it could be that they are actually in social groups i think it to be honest i think they probably could have formed social groups they're pretty intelligent creatures i think um i think they probably would have been hunting in packs a lot of them yeah um I agree. I think yeah. that that'd be that'd be the case. And interesting as well to see that the Tyrannosaurus, when that hunt happened, you know, there was two there. You know, when you exactly, think of yeah. T Rex hunting in Pat, I mean, as if they're not scary enough, you've got <laughs> two Tyrannosaurs hunting. Like, wow, God, that would have been uh, <laughs> something to witness. Well, there we have it. That is all five episodes. Yes. Now this is where the difficult question comes. Oh. God. <laughs> Which one is your favourite episode and why? Well, um, do you want to go first or should I? <laughs> you can go ahead. I'll, you go, I'll, uh, I'll think. Um, okay. Well, I'm probably going to say that I think the best one was the last one just because of the, the amount of action that we got in it. Uh, this hunt was very, very good. So it's North America for you? I think so, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the hunt. I enjoyed uh, of the the Nanooksaw with the the Ornithomimus. I did love seeing Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, scavenging on the um, the carcass of the Alamosaurus. Uh, just getting to see Alamosaurus as well was brilliant, um, and also seeing the Quetzalcoatlus take on the Tyrannosaur. I thought that was a really really good scene. Um, and also seeing the Mosasaur as well. The Mosasaur was hunting as well. So, and, and of course, the Triceratops. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? You know, th this classic thing that we know that they did and we see them going head to head, you know, uh, fighting for the right to mate. I think there's just so many good clips in this scene uh, that really made it stand out for me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this one at the top. Um, I, I'm fighting between that one and the Swamps episode because... Uh, obviously the Tyrannosaurus hunting <laughs> the Edmontosaurus is such a good scene and I would say that's probably what in fact that might be my favourite scene but the reason I'm going to pick uh, North America is just because there's so many good clips in this that this overall, one, overall yeah. it, has, uh, it gets a top spot for me so what about you, what do you think? <laughs> well I was quite similar I was stuck between I stood between three, North America, swamps, and I also liked oceans just for the fact of the uh, mm. um, that scene with uh, the Mosasaur jumping out yeah. um, with the Elasmosaur. I really enjoyed the, the science behind that with the you know, the sea um, shape pressing off the, the floor of the ocean. Yeah. Uh, I do love the Mosasaur, um, but if I had to narrow it down, it's got to be swamps. For swamps? Me. It's All got right, to be okay. swamps. Um, I just love that scene with the T-Rex. Um, those two T-Rex working together um, against the Edmontosaurus. Mm -hmm. um, really enjoyed that. And then I, I enjoyed the Beez, uh, Beals Buffet. That was, oh, yeah. That, that was good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Uh, and then I loved seeing the crocodiles at the beginning as well. Um, the mm. Shemosuchus, I believe it was called, yes. uh, hunting the, um, the pterosaurs flying over the water. I thought that was a really good scene because, as you mentioned, it's very similar to the crocodiles hunting the bats today. So that yeah. felt really, very real for me. Mm. Um, so I would have to say swamps. Swamps is your favourite. So wow. we've got swamps and North America. So, guys listening, put down in the comments what your favourite episode was. 
and why. Let us know. And let us know your favourite scene as well. Mm -hmm. So let's rank the episodes then. I think we can put North America as top. That's your favourite episode. Yes, as difficult as a decision this is, uh, yeah, I think uh, North America at the top. It's just got three very strong scenes for me. The Triceratops fighting, uh, the Nunuksaurus uh, hunt at the end, and uh, the beginning of the episode where we have the, the Quetz versus the Tyrannosaurus. I think they're just three very strong scenes that put it at the top for me. Definitely. So my favourite was Swamps, so I think should we say second place for Swamps? Yes, uh, the one with the Tyrannosaur hunt I think that can get a nice second place I agree, place the there. crocodiles, you've got Beals before and you've got the classic T-Rex hunt with Edmontosaurus mm -hmm. at the end. So that leaves um, we've got the islands, badlands and oceans so what are, what are we thinking for them? I'm going to say the Badlands, just because of that Velociraptor hunt yes. where he karate kicks the Prenocephaly off, off the, the cliff. cliff. I think uh, I think that deserves third place just from that alone. <laughs> so Badlands has third place, so that leaves Oceans and Islands to battle it out now for fourth and fifth place. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Oceans. You know, I would have said the same as well. Oceans. I think for the Mosasaur hunt, which is where it smashes out the water with the Elasmosaur, is just. It's too good of a scene to put at the bottom. That it's, just uh, gives it the edge, doesn't it? Yeah. And then that automatically puts Islands in fifth place, even though Islands was a good episode. Yeah, yeah, we had the um, Majungasaurus, which was, you know, a, a, an epic dinosaur to see. Yes. Um, I think it's just that the other episodes have just been a little bit stronger in areas. They just, by default, put Islands at the bottom in fifth. Yes, I think so. <laughs> so, our ranking is in fifth place, we've got Islands. In fourth place, we've got Oceans. In third place, we've got the Badlands. Second place is Swamps. And in first place is North America. So what do you think of that ranking, guys? Let us know if you agree. If you disagree, put your own ranking in the comments below. Let us know what you thought. On that note, guys, please, if you've enjoyed this podcast episode, please give us a like there. Drop a comment down below with your favourite episode and your favourite scene. And share it with someone who also loves Prehistoric Planet 2. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos.